With the exception of a few Udemy courses and a few books, I really didn't spend a lot of money on learning how to code. Some of the early tutorials that I did were on Udemy, but after I did a few of those, I decided to start looking around and finding different ways to learn to code that were free. In this video, I'm gonna share a bunch of the websites that I use to learn how to code along with a few other resources that were free that helped me when I was learning how to code. So let's just jump right into it. If you've seen some of my other videos, you may have heard me talk about Free Code Camp before. And I talk about it a lot because it's one of the main you know, websites and resources that I use to learn how to code. And it was 100% free. And also it's just a really good website that has a really good curriculum to teach you how to code and become a web developer. It's project-based, so you'll build a bunch of projects that you can add to your portfolio as you complete and work through the curriculum and the curriculum is set up to get you job ready. I also felt that it had a good balance of guiding you enough along the way, but letting you struggle enough to learn on your own, which I really like that about it. It's open source and you can contribute to give back. It also has a really good community. And I always recommend Free Code Camp first because it was one of my favorite sites to learn the code from and it's 100% free. The next website that I used early on after I completed a few of the first Udemy courses and I was focusing on Ruby on Rails was the Odin Project. The Odin Project's curriculum is also project-based learning. So if you decide to work through some of the stuff that they have there, you'll be building projects along the way and you'll be building a portfolio as well. The Odin project also offers a lot more than just Ruby on Rails now. When I first used it, it was mostly focused on Ruby on Rails, but now they cover a whole bunch of stuff that really helps you get job ready. And it's a really good free website that teaches you how to code. So I always recommend the Odin project second when people ask me what's a good website that I can use to learn how to code. And even if you don't decide to stick with the Odin project, you can do what I did and use the projects that they have listed on there to you know kind of build your portfolio once you've learned enough and you need project ideas i used a lot of the projects that they had there for ideas of things to build for my portfolio so you can always do that as well and you can do that with free code camp too with all the projects they have listed there so you don't have to stick with one thing once you feel you've learned enough and you want to start building stuff just take project ideas from all these websites and start building your own stuff without a doubt youtube has to be on this list because it was one of the best resources that I used for learning how to code. I used it for motivation, I used it for inspiration, I used it for tutorials, I used it for code examples when I was stuck on problems. I used it for getting me ready for a job and what to expect when I started a job. I used it for so many things. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to create a channel because I wanna give back and share my experience and my story with people who are going through it like I was when I was watching YouTube videos and, and just kinda of let you know that it's possible and that's why I did this. But YouTube, without a doubt, one of the best resources and specifically for learning, the ones that I used the most were like Traversy Media, Derek Banaz, Fun Fun Function, Wes Boss, and Level Up Tuts. All those guys that I just mentioned have so much great content out there. And there's so many amazing content creators that will teach you how to code on YouTube that I can make a whole video just on that topic alone. And who knows, if that's something you wanna see, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do that. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, Make sure to hit that like button. It'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's get back to it. All right, another huge resource that I need to mention was my local library. Yes, I sound like an old man. Who goes to the library anymore? Free books are free books. It saves you a ton of money. They have a ton of good books. And the best thing that I got from my local library was I got a free subscription to Linda and I got a free subscription to Team Treehouse. My local library, had a free subscription to these programs and all you had to do was go to the library show them your library card and they'd sign you up to it and they'd give you a password and that's it so i use team treehouse a lot for free now team treehouse isn't necessarily a free program i'm sure they offer some portions of it for free but i had pretty much you know full access 
to most of what they offered on there and I used Team Treehouse a bunch and it was a really good resource and if you're willing to spend 20 or 30 bucks or whatever it is a month to use their program, I recommend it. I'll put a link down below if you wanna check them out. Team Treehouse is pretty cool. I didn't use Linda that much. I, I used a tiny bit, I didn't really like it and I was already using so many other platforms for learning that it just didn't appeal to me so I didn't really use Linda. So I can't really talk too much about lynda.com. And definitely check out your local library and see what they have to offer. And of course, due to the current circumstances, you may not be able to go to your local library right now, but maybe check out their website if you currently have a library card and see if they offer some programs that are free. Because hey, you know that saved me a lot of money. I used Team Treehouse for like three or four months. So it, it's worth checking out your library and seeing what they have. Codecademy, I used a tiny bit. I felt like it held my hand too much and the free stuff that they offered just wasn't that good. So I never paid for any of their premium stuff and I didn't really like Codecademy. I don't know if other people had different experiences with Codecademy. If you have, you know, drop drop a comment and let me know what you thought of Codecademy because I really didn't like it too much. edX and Coursera, while I think they offer awesome programs and I love the fact that you can take college courses from prestigious universities online for free, a lot of the stuff when I was first learning out was way over my head and seemed just overly complicated and a lot of those lectures and college courses are extremely boring and I would find myself losing interest. I didn't find it engaging enough. I didn't I didn't enjoy it and if I wasn't gonna enjoy it, I, I, I was gonna be miserable learning and if I was gonna be miserable learning, I wasn't gonna have fun and then I probably would have quit. I never went to college, so maybe that's why I didn't like how it was set up on Coursera and edX. Let me know in the comments below if you went to college and you like how Coursera and edX courses are and if you've completed some of their courses or if you were like me and it was just way too boring and you didn't really want to watch it and you would use it to fall asleep to. All right, last on the list, I mentioned it before, Udemy. I use Udemy early on, paid courses, but if you look on Udemy, you can find some free courses. I know that I found a few free courses and if you look really hard, you can also find vouchers for courses that are paid. And although that I would get a lot of these Udemy courses that were free or I would get these vouchers occasionally and Sometimes I would buy them when they were on sale. I didn't finish and hardly started any of the Udemy courses that I did have in my catalog of courses that I had acquired. And there's a lot of good paid Udemy courses out there that you can check out. And I usually recommend doing some courses when you're first starting out and finishing a couple tutorials on Udemy that really like walk you through everything step by step and then branching out and doing stuff that kind of, you know, gets a little bit harder and a little bit harder and a little bit harder until you're building stuff on your own. I'll link a few of the web development courses that I used on Udemy when I was first learning how to code. And I'll also link a really good Udemy course on JavaScript that I really liked a lot that I always recommend to people who want to learn more and take a deeper dive into JavaScript down in the description. So check that out if you're interested in that and learning more about JavaScript. And if you are gonna buy Udemy courses, make sure to pick them up when they're on sale. They do them about once a month and any big holiday, they're gonna have a sale where the courses are like, you know, 15 bucks or less and you don't have to pay $100 for a course. So just wait for a sale, have a few on your wish list, and then have them notify you when there's a sale, and then you can pick them up when they're cheap and not spend too much, and that's how you can save a few bucks when you do have a bunch of tutorials that you don't end up using, you won't feel so bad about it. And there's some really good developers that make some really good courses that teach you how to code on Udemy. Just make sure not to collect too many of them because it's kind of a waste of money and there's a lot of other resources that you can use that'll teach you to, for free. So you don't really need to buy courses on Udemy. But you can if you find some that you think will really help you learn. And that's pretty much it. Those are the websites and some of the resources that I use to learn how to code for free. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.